welcome to Lessons from AFC's The Walking Dead. Um, today I'm going to give you a whirlwind tour of the uh, behind the scenes development of the course. And just in case you wonder where this crazy idea came from, it actually came from campus. A marketing manager uh, from uh, Instructure, Sonny in Washington, is a big old Walking Dead fan. Let me ask you, are there any more students that are Oh, nobody, right? I, I should let you know up front that um, because of the contractual relationship between the UCI and AMC, I cannot show you any of the images from the show. So, no zombies, none of your favorite characters. Nobody's thinking <laughs> So, anyway, Sony was a big, uh, is a big Walking Dead fan. And uh, one evening after watching the show, she thought, yeah, I wonder if we could make an academic course about that. <laughs> so she pursued the idea and um, approached AOC, explained to them what a movie is, what she wanted to do, and they said, yeah, sure, okay. interesting. Now, most of you here are Walking Dead fans, so you already know that The Walking Dead is um, a show about life after the zombie apocalypse. It's not really about zombies as much as it's about the characters the, and how these people are going to live in this world um, that is, has changed radically since the zombies have taken over. What you might know also is that it has a huge following. Um, our course launched in October of 2013 with the premiere of season four. Season four, um, the, over 16 million people watched this season four premiere. So it gives you a sense of how big of a fan is. So just connected show. directly in. Once the relationship between Canvas and AMC was established, Canvas went out looking for an academic institution that would create the course. And eventually, they found the University of California Irvine. Um, and I think we were all thrilled to be part of this project. It's got the leading edge, kind of pushed the envelope of what we can do with uh, academic. We had never worked with Canvas before. Um, my colleagues have extensive experience uh, developing MOOCs for uh, another MOOC platform that I won't mention, of course. But, so to explain the relationship as well among the three stakeholders is that um, Canvas um, was kind of the middle person. Um, they didn't know us, we didn't know them, and um, so they handled the communications between AMC. We never had direct contact with AMC. Melissa asked me to give you some numbers before we get started. Over 65,000 people enrolled in this course. Wow, wow, wow. And when they were asked, have you ever taken a MOOC before? There was a resounding no. So we introduced a whole lot of people to the new platform. Why did they enroll? Well, they enjoyed the show. Right? That makes sense. But one of my favorite numbers is I want to try a college course. That little number, 6%. Now you notice only about 6,000 people actually took the survey. You say, Jesse, that's a, that's a little more than 300 people. Who cares? But let me tell you, we would get messages from people telling us why they, they were so excited to be taking a college course for the first time. And one of the stories that really touched me was a woman messaged us and said, I, 20 years ago, I wanted to go to college, and I never got there. And today, I work two jobs. I have a disabled child that I take care of, as well as I support my elderly parents. I love the walking day, and I always wanted to go to college. And I'm going to post all of my extra time this, because I want to prove to myself that I could have gone to college. So, MOOCs are reaching a lot of people that might not otherwise have had access to higher education. <coughs> Talking about heroes. So what are your goals for taking the course? 93% learn new things. Isn't that fantastic? We have a culture that's emerging of lifelong learners. And what do they all say? They enjoyed the course. That's great. 
He said, uh, a lot of people said, I studied a topic that I might not otherwise have chosen to study. And this 70% of the top here that found the course material challenging was very important to us at UCI. UCI has very high academic standards, so, and as well as uh, both the chancellor and the provost of the university have given us their blessing to do this project, so no pressure. <laughs> we have to Um, at the end of the course, there were over 3,000 certificates collected, as well as over 17,000 badges. And from the time we first talked to Instructure to the day that the course was supposed to start, we had a little under two and a half months to develop an eight-week course, which was academically rigorous. So immediately, my, direct, my then director, Melissa Lobo, Sat down with myself and my colleague, Anthony Vincenzo. <laughs> we'll talk about the picture more. Um, and to discuss what the. I just have a question about the back to the certificates. Was that before we completed it or were certificates? I'll tell you what, can you hang on to the question? Because I'm going to have a QA for you guys. Oh, All right. Sure. So I appreciate that. Um, so we sat down and we talked about creating an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary course um, that would revolve around the themes of The Walking Dead. We selected four instructors, four faculty members that we knew had online experience and were very successful with. From left to right, Dr. Uh, Sarah Eichhorn, mathematics, Dr. Um, Mike Denon, uh, physics, Dr. Joanne Christofferson in social sciences, and Dr. Susanna Bick in public health. What you're seeing here is a board that we use to kind of track all of the content that we needed to create in the delivery days. So you can see eight, the eight weeks there and the massive amount of content that we decided to create. Now, I like to say that we took a very conservative approach in our content delivery strategy. And I say that in reminding you that we had never worked with Canvas.net before. We didn't know how stable the platform was. As well as, there was experience, we have experience developing moves, and we know some of the, the shortcomings and um, some of the more brighter moments of developing moves. So, when I say conservative, I mean that the lectures were um, voiceover PowerPoint lectures. Uh, we created discussion forums, there were academic articles, of course, and then quizzes. We also filled in that content with a lot of additional video that included expert interviews. Um, we conducted a faculty roundtable, um, and AMC um, came around and allowed us to do some actual interviews as well that were able to do. Now, before the, we even had a single piece of content developed, we're already, already getting press coverage. The duration of the course, over, there were only a thousand media interactions. So that means our faculty and our director are out talking to the press. We need an interview. No pressure. Uh, Carrie Sanders was my support person here um, from Instructure, and she gave me the whirlwind tour of Canvas. And knowing that I had no real content to work with, I knew that within my time frame I needed to get started as soon as possible. And I decided to start working on the landing and I decided to create an icon-driven landing page. So I pulled four, our four multi, people from our multimedia team who are very young, but very talented, and I explained to them what, what I wanted to create and that they were gonna be responsible for coming up with those images for those icons. And being a really young and experienced, they gave me this totally blank look. <laughs> and I sat them down and I said, okay, Let's brainstorm this. Let me explain. There are going to be themes in this course, and I want you to visualize from those different themes what images would come up. For example, when I say there's a, a topic on uh, post apocalyptic diet, what comes to mind? What kind of images? So we brainstorm some ideas that can just kind of see the light bulbs going off. And I said, okay, you guys are good. Go, go take some images and bring it back, bring it back to me. So they came back with a, a fantastic set of images to work with. So I had a good starting place. Now, one of the things that was very important with this course was creating a unified visual theme. Because remember, I got four instructors, four different uh, academic areas that are coming from, as well as we're working with uh, AMC, um, 
The Walking Dead, which is a, it has a very high production value. It's a very popular course. It's not campy at all. So I, I like my colleagues, ended up binge watching The Walking Dead, because I had not been a Walking Dead fan before. Well, I binge watched three seasons. I was seeing zombies. Um, but I became very enamored with that opening title sequence. And I went back to my media team and I said, I want to develop a filter that reflects that title sequence. I don't want to copy it, because we don't want to copy what the AMC is doing, but we want to honor what they're doing, and we need to be as professional as what they're doing. So after a few iterations, what they came back with was this, this blue, kind of washed out, uh, monochromatic filter that we applied to the images. And earlier you saw the, the photographs of the different staff members, those got applied to all the images that were there. Um, so all these images then became the landing page for the course. And that's just a screenshot of the landing page with the different um, icons. And each of those icons, once you click on them, they take you to that individual module. I want to share this picture with you because it shows you our faculty and how intensely focused they were on this project. They put a lot of their energy into it. And previously to, to this, they had not worked together. They came together as a team. There were no prima donnas on this team. This is taken from a Reddit um, dis live discussion they participated in. If you're not familiar with Reddit, um, I, I would describe it as a discussion uh, platform. There are uh, a lot of public figures and um, will use it at, to conduct online uh, discussions. And it's very popular with the Walking Dead fam. So it structures marketing team set up this Reddit discussion for the faculty to participate in as a promotion for the group. I should also mention that uh, Canvas, the uh, engineers, developed a Reddit-like discussion form that we used in the course itself. We didn't use the uh, standard uh, Canvas.net discussions. Now, I remember AMC has promised they're going to work with this. And so the first thing they sent us is this uh, merchandising guide PDF file, this tiny little file they gave me, that has some um, logos and some images that are about the size of postage stamps. And I went to Melissa and I said, Melissa, this is great, but we can't use these in the presentation because the quality is just not high enough. So AMC agreed to uh, have our faculty select images from different scenes that they were going to discuss in their lectures, um, and we sent them a list of images with the scenes, the, the episode numbers, the approximate time, um, and a brief description. AMC sent us back these images. They sent us some of what we asked for. They sent us some of what we didn't ask for. And um, we, we had a little under 60 images to work with. Um, so you'll see images repeated throughout there. I had to be kind of creative how we use the images. Now, I want to talk about the PowerPoint topic because I think we all need to talk about the PowerPoint topics. Um, again, I was looking for ways to unify, create unified visual look and feel to the course. I couldn't have my four instructors off just creating all the PowerPoints. So I knew that I needed to create a template. I will confide in you that I don't like templates. They're kind of a necessary evil. So off I go, and I want to share this with you because this is the first template I created. I, I, I didn't like it. I knew I didn't like it, but I, I made that internal stupid face every time I looked at it. I didn't think it's it. But I had it, I sent it off to the instructor, they sent it back to the AMC, and AMC said, oh, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And they sent it back this. <laughs> I said, oh, great, guys. Wonderful. I sit down and work with it. And about halfway through, Presentations. I went through all of the PowerPoints slide by slide and tweaked them all. I didn't get three slides in. I went, like, I can't look at this. How can I expect my students to look at this? So I tossed it out. I went back to the drawing board and I realized that, oh, wait, I've got all these images that my amazing team have created for me. So I created a general template that, went up, that extended the, the titles and the color theme across all eight modules. And then each individual module, I applied the uh, 
icon. That was the background for Shelly was in the It was one of those moments where you realize that you know, uh, creativity is so limited by negativity. So going on to the video production, we shot a lot of video, expert interviews, we did staff shoots. Um, one of the favorite shoots was the faculty round table. We took our faculty um, out into the big open field on a nice, hot, <laughs> Southern California morning. Um, and Melissa interviewed the different faculty, and from there, that gave them an opportunity to talk with one another. It gave our students an opportunity to see their personalities, and see how they would banter back and forth, and how they might exchange ideas on a given topic. So all those faculty roundtables became the uh, Beyond the Zombies videos uh, in the course. Um, our faculty also had an opportunity to go to Hollywood and interview some of the actors at the courtesy of AMC, which was a real thrill for them. Overall, we created over 60 videos, which were hosted via YouTube. I was really pleased with what we were able to do with YouTube. Um, for one, I needed some really strict privacy features. The privacy features in YouTube really performed for us. Remember, we have a lot of press. There are people that are looking for us. Um, and um, so we kept it private. We leveraged the closed captioning. This is a screenshot of our YouTube channel. Um, I was able to go in and change the banner weekly, as well as update the um, the trailer video there, the highlighted video, and I was able to create individual thumbnails that I plugged in. So on the static page, you'll see an individual thumbnail rather than the, the individual in the video coming in. This is a screenshot of a lesson page. You see the lecture, lecture video at the top, and then below, AMC gave us access to some clips that we requested that were related to that particular lecture. Those particular videos streamed from uh, AMC servers. So, I've given you the world with two of Thank you very much. So, what are your questions? I know uh, this gentleman over here had a question on the show. Yeah, it was about how, how were those for the ones that completed the program? <clears throat> no, they were for the ones that completed. Um, they had to get all of the badges. Um, so, you, you took a quiz, you successfully completed the quiz, you were in a badge. If you accumulated all the badges, then you were able to download the script. So when this um, idea first came out with Canvas, um, all of our team actually took this move to see kind of how Canvas functions since we were getting ready to bring Canvas on as, um, as a partner with our university. How did you, who actually did the, when you went to the Canvas network and the homepage that's red and if you wait too long the blood starts dripping down. That came from Canvas. That came from Canvas. Yeah, that was a good Did you have a parking again? Did you want to find the Easter egg in there? Huh? There's an Easter egg in there. There's a game behind it. I know. <laughs> we all took it. We all took the MOOC, and it was a great, a great time with it. Thank you. I'm glad you talked about the Um, the discussion forums in here were a little bit different because we weren't using the um, standard campus discussions. Um, possibly, Melissa, Melissa, do you want to kind of feel the question about the discussions? Because um, the discussions are such a key piece in a mood. Um, the ability for people not only to declare themselves but actually participate in one or another. Hey guys, and reminder to repeat the question. Oh, too. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you to repeat the question. The question was, how would you design the discussions? Any tips for designing the discussions? Okay, so when we were designing the discussions, we had to think about how to get people engaged in the content that was being discussed that module, but did not turn people off. So a lot of our discussion prompts, we had three for each week. And as Jesse described, there were eight weeks of modules and eight different topics. And the way the content in the course was designed, it didn't scaffold. You could come and go as you please, depending on what you were interested in. And so in each week's module, there would be two lectures, 
and then what we called a, an Ask the Expert kind of section, where it took that same topic and had a different faculty member address it from their discipline. So for example, in the population modeling, we had a population modeling or a math module, we had the um, public health professor go in and talk about modeling disease spread from a public health perspective. So anyway, so we had three main topics each week, and we assigned a prompted discussion for each one of those topics. And they were always about applying the concepts that you were learning to the real world. So it wasn't really discussing, some of them discussed the show, so how would you do this in the show? But a lot of them discussed, what's this like in your world, in your environment? How, how, where would you go hide? In fact, the first week, one of them was, where do you think the safest place is to hide? But explain your answer based on what you learned in that first week's module. So very personal, gave people a chance to reflect, still brought in the themes of the show. And we tried to avoid over-talking about the show so that people that may not have seen it um, or all of it didn't feel like they were excluded from those conversations. No, actually, no. So we had thousands upon thousands of discussion posts. So what happened was we actually had some student workers, um, not even in TA, it's just some student workers that worked for us, that we had go in and read the discussion forums each week and then provide a summary to the faculty member of the main themes, and they were to pick some of their favorite posts. And then the faculty would read that. Sometimes they would go back into those favorite posts and take a look at them, and then send a summary email out at the end of the week reflecting on what was said in the discussions and posting some other questions for people to think about. So the faculty were present, but we didn't ask them to have to be in the discussions responding, especially since it's a MOOC. And we set those expectations up front. We let students know you're not going to get individual responses to things. It's really challenging that fact that I think saying that it was a group effort to monitor those discussions is really important. And that's what I've seen in the most. One more kid? One more question? We have a lot of minutes. I'll just give points to Oh, perfect. Uh, just, just really quickly, you said you uh, chose not to use the, the default discussion module in Canvas. You used Red instead. What drove that decision? That was really a Canvas decision. Maybe don't mind me jumping into it. That was really a Canvas network decision. So um, at the time, I, like I said, I was at UCI at the time, but they wanted to try out Reddit because the population of Walking Dead fans and who we thought we'd be having in the course was so used to the Reddit style discussion, and it, as you know, it's very different than the Canvas discussions. They wanted to try it out and see how that would work and what kind of information they could get around discussion usage to then impact the product itself. So they asked us to do that at UCI. Go over here next. Mm -hmm. it should be on. Red light. Sorry about that. Um, when you said uh, the student workers uh, were from us, did you mean Canvas us or from um, UC or from us? UC Sorry, it's hard UC with my hat. <laughs> yeah, UC or Mike. Can you say something about the, the Reddit? Did um, participants, like students in the course, have the ability to upvote certain comments and questions at the top? And that would, yeah. So I can answer that. And there's some other features in Reddit that are really cool. Not all those features came over with the way we with the way Canvas implemented Reddit in the discussions. So no, that upvoting wasn't, uh, no, it was the ranking that wasn't. The ranking. You could upvote. Up you could upvote, but then the ranking didn't show up. Um, so there were some features that didn't um, apply, but yes, you could rank. Mm -hmm. And people did it. We had pretty consistent activity, just so you know, throughout all eight modules people were fairly consistent in engagement rates. We didn't actually have a drop. And overall, our engagement rate, or people that were active at least on a weekly basis, was about 11%, which is pretty good, considering MOOC. Okay, so um, I'm trying to be specific. So how many students do you use in this class, and how do they divide work? So that you know, like some students maybe look at these posts and some yeah. others. So we, we have three student assistants um, that we worked with that work with us, and we just divided up the workload. We actually assign them an instructor or assign them specific discussions. And then uh, my colleague and I, uh, Janet, who we listen to as well, we kind of help them as well monitor the discussions. The other thing we use the students for is in YouTube with the videos. 
we wanted to make sure the captions were accurate. And as you know, the captioning tool in YouTube is good, but comes up with some quirky references. That's for sure. Especially having an accent. Yes. One of our instructors has a very heavy accent. So our students have watched all the videos and corrected the captions, so they have the context of the learning in the classes as well. The maturity level is appropriate, actually, we found for our undergraduates, because we weren't asking them to teach in front of a class and facilitate activities, but we were asking them to facilitate discussions. And they, the maturity level really matched, at least for these year of our students. Okay, so it's the last question. Um, the Reddit, was it an LTI that you used? It was a Canvas Engineering Miracle, about that? <laughs> so it was not an LTI. That's another good question. I do not think so, <laughs> um, but we can certainly dig into that and find out for you. Thank you.